morning, everybody. Welcome back to another day of Wood and Wisdom. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. We will be doing lesson 30 today. You will need your Wood and Wisdom blue workbook because you're going to be completing handout 30B, end of module task evidence organizer at the end of this PowerPoint. You can find this worksheet inside your blue Wood and Wisdom workbook. Okay, you will also need a pencil. All right, so you can go ahead and get the materials after you watch the PowerPoint, or if you want to put pause and go grab it, that's perfectly fine. Let's get started. I am going to start off by reading off module four questions. Essential question and focusing question are the same. Why do people around the world admire Cinderella? Our content framing question, the question we will be answering today, what does a deeper exploration of the illustrations reveal in Glass Slipper Gold Sandal? This artwork right here is titled First Steps. The artist's name is Pablo Picasso. That's the person who drew the picture or painted, the, the, painted this piece of art. He is a very famous artist from Spain. This painting was created 85 years after Millet's painting and 50 years after Van Gogh's version. So Millet's and Van Gogh's paintings are paintings that we went over in the classroom, okay? And it's okay if you don't remember them right now, all right? Now, what types of lines and colors have we discussed in previous modules? Do you remember any? Any time that we would look at a painting, observe it, see how they exactly drew the lines, the details on the painting. Do you remember any of those lines? If you don't, don't worry. So we have learned about primary and complementary colors. We also have discussed horizon and vertical lines. So horizon and vertical lines are the lines that we have talked about before. Horizon lines, lines that run across a painting, and vertical lines, lines that go up and down, okay? How would you describe Picasso's use of color? Look at, the, look at the painting on the screen. What would you say about it? How would you describe it? You can say your ideas right now. Go ahead. Awesome. Okay. Now, yes, I could not hear you, but I'm pretty sure that, hey, we all have different opinions about things. So anything you say is valid. Okay, launch. Our content framing question, like I mentioned before, what does a deeper exploration of the illustrations reveal in glass slip or gold sand? All right. What type of lines do you see on the cover of our book, Glass Slip or Gold Sandal? Here is a picture of the front cover of the book. And as you can see, there's a lot of different lines on it, right? You can see them going up and down to this from side to side, all across, right? We're going to be discussing more about this, talking more about the different um, shapes, the lines, all of that, okay? We're going to learn why the author uses different lines and patterns in this book. So let's read some information about the illustrator to learn more about what inspired her. Remember, the illustrator is the person who created the pictures inside the book. So listen to me read it to you. Julie Paschkis. I hope I said that right. Drew on the folk art traditions of different countries to tell this story visually. She was particularly inspired by the traditional textiles of the cultures, weaving together the various colors and design motives to create one story. Julie has illustrated many other books, including Through George's Eyes. Now, we are going to go on a hunt through our book to examine the cultural textile patterns included in the illustrations. You'll see what I mean with cultural textile patterns, okay? So let's go ahead and start. These are some cultural textile patterns. 
Okay, we will use the patterns below to find similar designs in glass slipper gold sandal. So we're going to use these patterns to compare them to some patterns in the book. All right, you can look at them, look at them for a while. All right, so what pattern do you see here? Do you see anything on this page this is a page from the book do you see any pattern here that looks similar to one of these animal print can be found on the zimbabwe page so on the page that talks about zimbabwe we can see some type of animal print in the back Animal print is you, you're able, like, for example, here you see a lot. It looks like a lion. This looks like a little bird, right? And this right here where my mouse, the arrow is, could possibly look like or be a, a giraffe. So we can see some animal print. This is another piece. Um of page from the book this is indonesia all right what pattern do you see do you see any type of pattern any type of illustrations or specific types of drawings or pictures in the back butterfly print can be found in indonesia so this right here was is highlighted if you see my my mouse this is butterfly print we can see something very similar in the back of this page so let's look at another page this is poland all right what pattern do you see here look at the back the yellowish with reddish we can see the rooster print. The most similar one is the rooster print and it can be found in pollen. Now you will learn about how all these designs were created, okay? So we're gonna begin researching information to answer this question. What did you learn about textile art? Textile art, I'm gonna go back quickly. This art, okay, what did you learn about this art? And we will view videos and read articles. Actually, we're gonna view videos that will give information about the different styles of textiles. At the end of each resource, um, we won't have to record any information down since this is a quick PowerPoint, okay? So we're going to view some videos that give information about the different styles of textiles. I'm going to put play on the first one. So there, they drew some pictures on some cloth and they are applying hot wax on it, right? To finish the design and to finish the colors on the cloth. They're designing the cloth with textile shapes and art. They apply hot wax with copper stamp that, that they're Hitting is called a copper stamp. That way it stays there forever. You can even see some children helping out. You can see them design there. They're applying more designs on other types of things. 
and there they prepare their own dye. The dye is the color. They prepare their, their own colors that they apply to those designs. Hand dyeing, they dip the cloth into the dye, into the paint, and then they let it dry. And it doesn't come off anymore. You can see one already done and created. It's right there. Another one. And these are all handmade. And that is called batik art. It has been around for over 2,000 years, developed to a sophisticated level by batik artisans in Hava Island, Indonesia. So that's how they create that specific art in Indonesia. Okay. Let's look at Kadinda. All right. Let's find out what that talks about. Whoops. This one right here. Let me click on this one. That was like a little presentation on how from a piece of paper they created a piece of art. And they used that shape to decorate other things like for example a painting and they put it in the background. I'm going to try to expand this one, okay? I'm not sure if you're able to see that one so I'm not going to click play on that one. Um, and then, whoops. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's move on to planning your end of module task. So like I had mentioned prior in prior lessons, your end of module is going to be talking about which of the Cinderella characters do you most admire out of all the ones we've read about. Okay, so your exit ticket is going to be handout 30B, the one I showed you at the beginning of this PowerPoint that is found inside your workbook. Um, you're going to fill out your organizer so it can help you when you write your end of module prompt on Thursday. So what you're doing here is you're jotting down your ideas. You are not writing a story 
All you're doing is writing down words, any ideas, any notes that are going to help you create your story on Thursday, okay? Because Thursday is gonna be here in the module. So for example, I'm gonna go over the chart, introduction. Um, you're gonna write one sentence as an introduction, okay? You make up your introduction because this is your writing. Make sure you use complete um, thoughts, all right? Now, for your opinion statement, name a Cinderella you most admire. You can go ahead and write, I most admire Pear Blossom. That's an example, Bigfoot Cinderella. Um, Ella, that was her name, Adelita. Um, which Cinderella do you most admire, okay? Reasons, you need to give me a reason, a trait. Why? We've gone over the traits. We've gone over the actions that they do, okay? If, for example, because she is helpful, which is a trait, why? Well, she helped mom clean. She's always sweeping. She's always cleaning after sisters and stepmom. Um, and then your opinion. This is why I most admire blank. You're not going to write blank. You're going to write the name of the Cinderella you most admire. Okay, and if you wish to go back to see any traits or actions for these Cinderella's that we have gone over, I will post um, un under the resource tab for the assignment tab. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can go ahead and put a list of the some traits and some actions. Okay, if not, I'll go ahead and attach a picture on here next to the PowerPoint. That way you can go back and forth and get clear ideas, All right? Well, with that being said, you can also use the charts that we gave in the vocabulary packet. I know in the front, there's some sentence starters that you can use that can help you, All right? Well, if anything, you can feel, re feel free to reach out to me. Thank you and have a wonderful Tuesday. Bye.